as CEO sentiment across the country continues to turn sour. From the Business Roundtable on CNBC yesterday, Union Pacific CEO Lance Fritz, J.P. Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon, and Walmart CEO Doug McMillan, all with less than rosy outlooks for the year ahead. Joining me now is Jenny Harrington, CEO of Gilman Hill Asset Management. She is also a CNBC contributor. Uh, Jenny, good morning to you. I don't know about you. I, I actually like to underpromise and overdeliver. I'm wondering if you if you think CEOs are trying to do the same here. Um, I don't know. I think that I think that they're probably being pretty genuine, at least with the group that you lined up. So um, yeah. So my guess is they're actually trying to they're trying to take the Jay Powell route, which is pave the way, you know, pave the road and get people ready for it. Yeah, we're one week away from a Fed decision. We sort of got a look, though, right, from Fed Chair Jerome Powell, what he, what his uh, outlook is on the economy. He even said last week, Jenny, that a soft landing is achievable. Knowing that, what changes are you making to your portfolio? Do you believe him? Okay, so that's such a great question. So the, the reality is, yeah, I believe him, but I don't make any changes to my portfolio based on what he says. This is a portfolio, and, and this goes back a little bit to your CEO question and, and the teaser that you gave, which is, you know, Jenny Harrington's still bullish on the market. So let me try and tie it all together with that. But the, the reality is, is no, I am not bullish on the market. As my partner Greg always says, and I think this is simple but profound, which is, hey, it's a big market, and you know what the best thing for us is? We don't need to buy the whole market. And what I think of, of what's going on now, and this is where I diverge in my portfolio or the Gilman Hill portfolios, which are, there's a dividend portfolio, also a discipline growth strategy, and I'll throw out some names there, but where I diverge between those CEOs' negative sentiment and my positivity, not on the market, but on the portfolios that we manage, is that exactly that, it's a big market and you don't need to choose. And none of the strategies that we manage are based on the next two weeks and what Jay Powell says. What we say is, okay, here's what we know from the Fed. Mm -hmm. Rates are going to be higher. We all know it's 50 basis points coming in December. I don't really know what his rhetoric is, whether that slings about the market in the short term, which it always seems to. Like, I don't really care. Mm -hmm. You know, I care because it stinks to lose money in the short term, but as a long-term portfolio manager, we're just normalizing. And so I take all that and say, you know what? Here's what I actually care about, the fact that the risk-free rate now is higher than it was, and it will probably be higher for longer, and that adjusts the valuation work that we do. So then we need to be pickier and choosier. Mm. But getting back into those CEOs versus my, you know, more, I don't know, upbeat outlook or my thought that even with, you know, if, if we get a soft landing, if we don't, you know, if we have a nasty recession, who knows if, you know, if it's easier. I think we can still make money. And that's because you can look at companies, and these are from our discipline growth strategy, but you can look at companies like Uber that are already down significantly and they're starting, they've become very competitive. And they're actually saying this year, hey, we need to make money. And you know what's going to happen? Their free cash flow is going to explode. They're going to create $2.2 billion of free cash flow in 2023, $4.4 billion, $4 billion in 2024. That gives them an 8% free cash flow yield in 2024. I want to buy that now and be well ahead of that. And I don't really care what Union Pacific and JP Morgan say. That's independent of what I see as the math here. So sort of and finding what these we're saying is we're seeing that mm -hmm. can continue to do well in this environment. You mentioned Uber. I just want to get your, your thesis on JetBlue, which I know you've been a, yeah. a long term owner of. Right. Um, so JetBlue's in a lot of ways the same kind of thing. And this is where there's just enormous asynchrony between different industries, um, different different companies different sectors. So JetBlue, you know, we might say, okay, the consumer is having a tough time, you know, and that's where you hear Walmart. But you know what? They're spending hand over fist on travel. And JetBlue's been really, really good about being aggressive on pricing, which stinks for me because I wanted to go to Florida with my daughter a couple weeks ago. Tickets were like $800, so I didn't go. Um, but it's great for JetBlue. And so at JetBlue, you've got a stock that's trading at $8 a share. They're going to earn 64 cents, sorry, 62 cents in 2023. They're going to earn $1.48 in um, 2024, which puts them at a six times multiple, it's a little bit less actually, a six times multiple on 2024 earnings. Meanwhile, they were earning $2 a share before the pandemic. Do we think that they can get back there? Absolutely. So there's opportunities out there. And let's see, who was it? One of the CEOs yesterday said, hey, you know, if I didn't have to be on CNBC, Scott Kirby, recession would be in my, in my dialect. Right, Scott, you're right, right. Right, yes, because you, you tuned in on, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think that's okay. really important is, is there are 7,000 publicly traded stocks out there. They are not all having the same experience at the same time. And I think we we've, we've need to move away from the past decade of 
passive investing, index investing, the rising okay. tide raising all ships, and we need to appreciate that it's stock picking and active management right now. Within that, there is money to be made.